how uh -huh. difficult uh, were some of these training exercises that you went through, and what was the most eye-opening part of this experience? Well, you know, honestly, the uh, the physical element certainly uh, is a uh, is a big component, and you got to be in decent shape for it. But but what surprised me was that you know I wasn't so far out of range for that. It was the uh, the education, it was the background that really uh, separates people. I think you need to have four year uh, STEM degree and uh, at least three years of relevant experience and uh, NASA received more than 18,000 applications this year so uh, they're only choosing about 12 between eight and a, a dozen astronauts so they're really really being uh, uh, selective this year. Yeah you, you have to have an, a degree in uh, math science or engineering right what did you study? Uh, I studied acting. Oh so yeah okay. clearly that's not gonna work for right. NASA. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, actor slash journalist did not quite uh, cut mustard for those guys for some reason. <laughs> well, you know what's but, pretty uh, cool to see you uh, in that space exploration vehicle, and I can't believe they let you do donuts in that. That thing was awesome. Um, <laughs> it, it was just so fun to drive, and it was really incredibly easy. You know, it's just just a straight up joystick. You go right, left. You turn it your wrist one way or the other to rotate and that's really it you can go over huge rocks and you you barely feel it inside that was very cool well, that looks like a fun part of it but what about this um, you know they, they made you put on these space gloves and kind of figure out how to work your hands with it how did that work out for you it looked quite stiff yeah that's a big part of the training because uh, what happens is you know your suit is full of air and then when you're out in the vacuum of space it uh, you've got the material of the suit expanding against uh, these sort of ribs that are covering the arms and the fingers and all that stuff so there's just a ton of rigidity so um, these astronauts really have to have a lot of finger strength and a lot of uh, dexterity in fact one of the early astronauts uh, doing one of the first spacewalks his suit started inflating so badly he almost wasn't able to get back into Ooh. the uh, space capsule so uh, they've made a lot of improvements and they're constantly uh, making more and more uh, improvements trying to get it thinner lighter and more flexible but uh, but yeah it took a lot of work just to be able to, to work a little clip do you think you would have been able to help yourself if you had something in your eye or something like that with those gloves on no way yeah definitely that that definitely would have been a failure. I would have just had to suffer through it. <laughs> you know, we're looking at video now of you tasting, checking out the, the, the space food. We know uh, Scott Kelly just right. got back from, you know, one year in space and he had to live on this for 340 days. Uh, you yeah. said in your video that it tasted pretty good. Were you, did you truly mean that or were you just being polite? No, I actually did mean that. You know, um, they they really they balance everything to keep it, uh, you know, nutritious. They don't want to have too much sodium for these guys or anything like that. But uh, they have a lot of variety of space food. It's come a long way from just that kind of bland paste. And you heat it up, and it's nice. And I've learned that the international astronauts trade food a lot. So, you know, the Japanese guys have a meal that's sort of appealing to the Americans, and they'll swap around. Or the Russians have some some sort of ration that the American wants. They'll they'll kind of trade and share and stuff like that. And they have mm. big team dinners with the with everybody once a week. So uh, yeah, it, it seems uh, it seems like uh, anybody could really survive on that stuff for a year. It was it was actually quite good. 